Three lives, three worlds, lotus steps. Wherever step goes, lotus blooms. Metamorphosis. Lotus Step Chapter 14. Book 1. In the next few days, it was indeed rare to see the two people in the Chunwe courtyard in the palace. Dragonfly takes Ching Yu out every day. There is a tall building in the East Mountain. Dragonfly led her up to the building to enjoy the view. A pot of chin, the 18-year-old daughter, was opened in the building. They sat across from each other and drank drunkenly. The mountain scenery was leisurely and the breeze came slowly. Dragonfly asked her, does the princess feel at ease? Ching Yu thinks this is quite leisurely. There is a green lake in the western suburbs. Dragonfly takes her on a boat trip in the lake and brews a pot of lotus seeds with the water in the middle of the lake. Then she listens to the singer in the boat next door singing two seasonal ditties. The dragonfly asks her questions amid the scent of tea, which makes the princess feel happy. Well, Chengyu thinks this is quite pleasant. Dragonfly was interesting and had ideas, and took her around to have fun. Chen Yu gradually let go of Ji Ming Feng and didn't think about him much anymore. Ten days passed in a blink of an eye. Ten days later, Cheng Yu heard someone mention Ji Ming Feng again. It was a misty morning, and Cheng Yu was chasing the crane that flew out of the spring garden. Unexpectedly, he bumped into two girls leaning on the rockery and biting their ears. The little maid said, that Prince Ji went out a few days ago. Ji Shitsi went out and brought back a charming guest from outside. The girl was as beautiful as Jade, with a moon-like appearance, but the prince protected her very carefully. He didn't know where she came from. Chen Yu stood behind the rockery and thought, Prince Ji picked her up from Chilua Mountain two months ago, and Prince Ji picked up another girl from nowhere two months later. Ji Shitsi looked cold and solemn, but he didn't expect that he could help people in trouble, be willing to help others, and pick up girls. The big bird above her head fluttered its wings, and she came back to her senses and continued to chase the crane. This day is the seventh day of April. On the seventh day of April, Chen Yu heard someone mention Prince Ji. Unexpectedly, she met Prince Ji the next day. This day is the 8th day of April, and the 8th day of April is the birthday of Buddha. On the day of the Buddha's birthday, you need to worship the Buddha, worship the ancestors, give alms to the monks, go to the Zen monastery outside the city to participate in the Buddha bathing ceremony, etc. But Cheng Yu was not in Beijing this year, so she didn't have to do any of these things. She just spent the whole day wandering around the streets. As she walked to the sunset, she heard that early summer was the time when new wine was brewed. Twenty-four restaurants in Han City would sell new wine at the beginning of the day at the beginning of the day. He took the dragonfly with him and went to the wine shop street to kill him. The two of them drank at one restaurant after another on the liquor street. When they reached the twelfth restaurant, dragonfly was okay, but she was a little drifting. She ran out to cool down in the middle of the night, but she met someone with frowning eyebrows sitting in the jewelry shop next door. Chin Sume at the door. Miss Chin's eyes lit up when she saw her, and she called her hurriedly, Princess. She bent down and saluted her. Her posture was a bit awkward. Miss Chin went out to give an umbrella to Prince Ji, who was drinking tea in Ubeijai. Miss Chin's salute was awkward because she had sprained her right foot because she was walking hastily on the way. Miss Chin went out in a hurry and didn't bring a girl with her. Her foot was sprained and there was no one who could bring her an umbrella or send her to the hospital. She had to sit in front of a familiar jewelry shop and feel worried. Seeing Cheng Yu, Miss Chin felt like she was seeing a savior and entrusted her with all kinds of requests, asking her to run on her behalf and deliver an umbrella to the prince in case he got caught in the rain on his way home. That's what happened. Chang Yu looked up at the sky, and there were indeed thick clouds covering the moon in the sky, which was a sign of rain. She agreed with Miss Chin, and without even thinking of going back to the hall to say hello to Dragonfly, she went straight to Ubeja. If Cheng Yu was sober, she probably wouldn't handle this matter like this, but she was confused at this time. Although she knew that Ji Ming Feng didn't want to see her, she thought so under the influence of alcohol, and she felt that she didn't mean to do it. Going to see Ji Ming Feng is an eyesore to him. Is she helping Miss Chin deliver an umbrella? She has a reputation as a teacher, so Prince Ji can probably understand her. 
Zhang Yu held an umbrella and walked into Qing Yuan Street. After getting lost twice, she finally found Yu Beijia. The maid who greeted Ji Mingfeng had to go to Ji Mingfeng's private room upstairs to pass the message for her and ask her to wait downstairs. She was too lazy to wait, so she followed the maid up to the second floor and went directly to the orchid room at the end. As soon as the maid opened the door of the lawn room, she floated over like a ghost holding two umbrellas. She held the half-open door with one hand and frowned slightly. When did my brother Shitsi and I get to know each other? I'm just here to take care of Chin. The girl gave me an umbrella, so I don't think it needs to be passed around. But got no reply. Prince Ji never liked to talk to her. Ten days ago, he had treated her as a transparent person. She expected this reaction at this time. She rubbed her forehead and raised her head. Brother Prince, you don't have to be like this, I. The word, I got stuck in her throat. Only then did she realize that the person standing in the door was not Prince Ji, but a beautiful girl. The girl is dressed in white and Han attire, but she has a high nose and deep eyes, eyebrows like crescent moons, lips like pills, and a pretty face. She does not look like a Han Chinese. She is a Yi woman. Cheng Yi was stunned for a moment. Oh, I went to the wrong place. As he spoke, he turned around. When he turned around and saw the maid standing quietly beside him, he was stunned again. You led me here, she wondered. Didn't you lead me the wrong way? Just as the maid was about to reply, the woman in white behind the door spoke. But Princess Hong Yu? Cheng Yu turned his head and said, The girl is. At this moment, a stern young man in black clothes slowly walked out from the depths of the room and stood in front of the woman in white clothes. His cold eyes swept across Ching Yu's face without stopping. Raise your hand to close the door. Ching Yu quickly stuck half of his body into the door frame. Brother Shitsi is going to close the door now. Just crush me to death. There was silence in the room for a moment. Ji Mingfeng didn't try to close the door again, and he didn't ignore her anymore, but his voice was very cold and deep. Haibo didn't make it clear enough? Haibo is the old steward of Just Wong Courtyard. It was a sentence without beginning or end, but Cheng Yu immediately understood its meaning. Ji Mingfeng no longer treats her as a transparent person. She thinks this is an improvement, but Ji Mingfeng's words are a bit unkind. She raised her head and glanced at Ji Mingfeng, brother prince. Ji Mingfeng also looked at her with all eyes on him. Emotionless, he frowned slightly when he heard the words, eldest brother, brother. She was a bit cowardly. Even if she was drunk, she couldn't be as arrogant as before. She lowered her head in some decadence and murmured, Uncle Hai just said, let me not go to the South study room again. She quickly said again, he said, I have never been to Nan's study room again. You have always been smart. Ji Mingfeng replied to her with a calm voice. Of course you know how to draw inferences from one example and understand what the phrase don't go to Nan's study room again means. Of course she knew, but she shook her head seriously. I'm not smart, I don't know. This time Ji Mingfeng was silent for a long time. After a long time, he stared at Cheng Yu. Don't appear in front of me again. Is this meaning so difficult to understand? Compared with other tea houses that Cheng Yu often visited in Pingan City, Yuhokusai Tea House has one very different feature. Yuhokusai is very quiet. There are no seats in the building, only private rooms, and the guests are not noisy. Even when the waiters come and go, they all talk in whispers. Therefore, when the tea friends in the same room stop chatting, the only smells from the second floor can be heard in the building. The sound of the guchin came from behind a bamboo curtain. At this time, Ching Yu could only hear the sound of the guchin. She recognized that the violinist was playing Autumn Wind Si. Ji Mingfeng still looked at her with very indifferent eyes. Ji Mingfeng asked her if it was so difficult to understand. It's actually not that hard to understand. How smart she was, she actually always understood what he meant. But at this time, she couldn't help but murmured, it's just that hard to understand. She repeated it again seriously, it's just that hard to understand. Then she saw Ji Mingfeng frowning, which meant trouble and disapproval. She thinks. In just the blink of an eye, his frown blurred in her eyes. She knew immediately that she was crying. 
She also knew exactly why she was crying. She always knew that Ji Mingfeng didn't want her to appear in front of him again and might be annoyed even by looking at her, but that was just what she thought before, and it didn't feel very real. Listening to Ji Mingfeng's words at this time, this sudden sense of reality was like a fine needle piercing her heart. She couldn't hold back the unexpected pain. She was afraid of pain, so she cried. But it was obvious that Ji Mingfeng didn't understand her sadness. He scolded her in a hoarse voice, stop being like a child and crying when something goes wrong. You are already 16 years old. Yes, he was tired of himself, so he couldn't bear her sadness anymore. She suddenly felt very angry. She told Dragonfly that she understood that sometimes people are like that. One person would suddenly hate another person for no reason, but she actually still wanted a reason. Why did he hate her so much all of a sudden and not even give her a chance? He is the unreasonable one. This anger stimulated her like never before. She suddenly threw the two purple bamboo umbrellas in her hands in front of Ji Ming Feng and yelled at him with all her strength, I'm just a child. I'm just stupid. I don't know you at all. What are you talking about? I'm so sad that I can't even cry. Her words were garbled and she didn't know what she was talking about, but Ji Ming Feng seemed to be restrained by her and remained silent for a while. The tears that kept falling blocked her sight, and she couldn't see Ji Ming Feng's expression clearly, but she still had a secret desire in her heart, hoping to discern some insincerity in Ji Ming Feng's expression. She didn't imagine that he would feel any pain because of her sadness. She had always been optimistic and easy to coax, so just a little pity would be enough. She tried her best to wipe the tears from her face and wiped them with her sleeve. After wiping away her tears, Ching Yu finally saw clearly the expressions of the two people standing in front of her. The first thing she noticed was the woman in white next to Ji Mingfeng. The woman in white had an inquiring look on her face, and her eyes as she looked at her were half disdainful and half pitiful. Then came Ji Mingfeng. Ji Mingfeng was still frowning. When he noticed that she had stopped crying, he raised his hand and rubbed his forehead. You've had enough trouble. Tonight, go back. Don't appear in front of me again. Stop being such a kid. You've had enough trouble tonight, go back. Chang Yu was stunned for a while, suddenly feeling that everything tonight was meaningless and disgusting. She used to be such a little girl who rarely felt sad. Most of the time, she felt that everything in the world was fine and she didn't know what disgust meant. But tonight, she suddenly remembered that there was a word in the world called disgust, and that was exactly how she felt at the moment. She was quiet for a while. After a while, she whispered, Well, it's time to go back. She said sadly, I may be a little ridiculous tonight. It's so rude to pester me like this. I probably drank some wine on the way here. She raised her eyebrows at the beginning, Your Majesty, there is no need to feel troubled. At this time, I feel that I have sobered up. Tonight, she pursed her lips slightly, I will make the crown prince and this girl laugh. She no longer said those coquettish and willful words. Speaking like this, she looked like a big girl like never before, dignified, decent, and polite. Ji Mingfeng moved his lips, but in the end, he said nothing. But Ching Yu didn't notice it. She seemed to think for a moment and said boredly, that's it, I'm leaving. After that, she turned around and left. Walking straight to the stairs, she heard Ji Ming Feng say from behind her, That's it, what is it? She stopped, but did not turn around, but looked up at the beams as if thinking, and finally said, That's what the prince wants. Then she went downstairs. The sound of footsteps coming up the stairs was thump, 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 not fast and not slow, which is the way a noble lady should walk. She didn't call him Prince Brother anymore. Since then, Cheng Yu has never called Ji Mingfeng the Prince Brother again. Later, when Zhu Jin brought her back to Ping'an City, she completely forgot about this title. It was a stormy night in Hanqing that night, and Cheng Yu returned home at three o'clock. When she looked back, she realized that Dragonfly was following her not far behind. Both of them were soaked in the heavy rain. The boy who opened the door stared at her in fear. When he looked down, 
He was so frightened that he could not speak clearly. Princess, princess, this, this is. She also followed the boy's gaze and saw that half of her skirt was covered with mud stains, and the edges of her soft silk shoes were also stained with mud, but there was half a piece of red flower on the tip of the shoe. The color of the flower was reflected by the wind lantern in the boy's hand, which made it look a bit bright. It fell on the streets of Qingyuan. She remembers. The rain in early summer came quickly. Not long after she stepped out of Yuhokasai, it started to rain. After exiting Qingyuan Street, she realized that she had gone in the wrong direction, so she turned back. When Zhong approached Yu Beijai, he saw Ji Mingfeng walking out of the tea house with the woman in white. She stopped in the rain and saw Prince Ji opening a purple bamboo umbrella and stepping out of the eaves. Then he tilted the umbrella. The woman in white held up a bit of her skirt with one hand and stepped under the umbrella. That little move showed that she was not used to Han. Attire. Prince Ji's umbrella tilted towards the girl again. The two shared an umbrella and walked slowly away in the heavy rain. Chang Yu shivered in the rain, and she started walking again after they walked some distance away. Her body was shivering from the cold rain, and she accidentally stumbled while walking. When her eyes fell to the ground, she realized that the pomegranate flowers on both sides of the street had been torn down by the April rain. The pomegranate trees that could be seen all looked like young men and women that had been drenched by the rain, and the flowers that she could see were just the chaotic red fallen flowers all over the ground. Such a bleak situation made her feel a little bleak. She sat on the ground for a long time, not knowing what she was thinking. It wasn't until she sneezed that she stood up to figure out the direction and headed towards the palace. There is such an episode. When Night Dragonfly helped Chen Yu take a hot bath, poured her a full bowl of ginger soup, and ordered her some very effective soothing incense, she covered herself with the quilt and slept soundly all night. When she opened her eyes again, she was already asleep. It was six o'clock the next day. The only sound in the room was the sound of cold rain knocking on the window. Dragonfly sat in front of her bed. Seeing her wake up, he whispered to her, People say, everything yesterday is like dying yesterday, and everything today is like living today. The princess was wronged yesterday. One time, one time crying, another time being wetted by the rain, all the things happened yesterday. Does the princess want it to live or die? Ching Yu yawned and said calmly, I hope that everything happened yesterday, such as dying yesterday. When an emperor marries a family, both the girl and the son will be fierce-tempered, and sometimes even the wives they marry will be fierce-tempered. The person with the most violent temper when starting a family was Emperor Ruizong more than 20 years ago. The Dashi dynasty has been in existence for more than 200 years. Since the beginning of the dynasty, it has been a sworn enemy of the Northern Wei dynasty. All the emperors had wars and pieces with the Northern Wei dynasty during their reign, and even sent princesses to make peace. Only Emperor Rui Hong did what he said and then made peace. Bei Wei had to work for a lifetime until his death. When Emperor Rui Hong was on the throne, only princes were buried at the border of Shi Wei, and there was never a marriage between a princess and a daughter. It was so fierce. And this Emperor Rui Hong was Cheng Yu's grandfather. It should be noted that Princess Qingyu of Hongyu Princess admired her grandfather the most in her life, followed by her father. Carrying on her grandfather's character, although Chang Yu is under 16 years old, she is quite fierce when it comes to serious matters. She said that if she died yesterday, then she was really dead, and it would never be possible to save her again. Cheng Yu, who had completely finished everything yesterday, had been reading in his room for a few days. He found a crumpled book of Yushan from somewhere, which said that there were hidden treasures hidden in several deep mountains outside Hanqing. Mysterious dark cave. Ching Yu couldn't put it down and read it like a charm. After reading it, he dragged the dragonfly and ran away to explore the secrets. They spent the entire April in the deep mountains and forests, fighting to kill wolves and tigers. Dragonfly, who was born as a shadow guard, didn't think there was any problem with this at all. Until the end of April, Prince Ji had a talk with Dragonfly. The general idea was that if she took Princess Hong Yu out in danger again, both of them would be grounded. 
This would give the jackals, tigers, and leopards in the deep mountains and forests outside the city a way out. For the past 20 days, Cheng Yu and Ji Shitsi Wang have not seen each other. When Dragonfly talked to her about Prince Ji's interference, she just nodded and said that if you are a guest here, you should obey the master's orders, as this is the courtesy of a guest. Then I went to the back garden to read and feed the fish. Dragonfly had never seen her like this before, and it felt fresh for a moment. She didn't know that the princess in front of her was raised by free flower demons and controlled by the majestic imperial court. She was very naive when she was innocent, very willful when she was willful, and she could be extremely well-behaved when she was well-behaved. In May, Cheng Yi walked alone in the garden of the mansion, so he met Prince Ji and the e-girl brought back by Prince Ji several times. Prince Ji still treated her the same way, but the e-girl wearing white clothes next to him treated her a little differently. Sometimes this girl is with Prince Ji. When she is with Prince Ji, she will imitate Prince Ji and look at him as if the jade does not exist. Sometimes this girl is alone. When she is alone, she will pretend to be casual and walk by the pavilion where Zi Ching Yu feeds the fish, and his eyes will be swept towards her body. Cheng Yu is an unlucky princess who has to make a living in the palace during the holidays. The most indispensable thing in the palace is the woman scheming. She can feel the probing and contempt in the girl's eyes. But Chen Yu felt that this was actually not her fault. Who told her to make a scene and cry without regard for dignity that night in Yubia's eye? The girl in white has a very special origin, and there are some legends in the house. The version whispered by the servants is that this girl's surname is Nuhu, and her name is Junzi. She was saved by Crown Prince Ji from a group of horse thieves in the Welling tribe, one of the 13 E tribes. The horse thieves wiped out the girl's entire family, and the Crown Prince took pity on her, so he took her back to his house. If she can serve him well, he will make her his concubine. Chin Yu felt that Prince Ji was strict in choosing friends, but he was quite casual in choosing concubines. However, Dragonfly did not agree with her on this matter. Dragonfly felt that the version mentioned by the servants was a deception deliberately put out by the crown prince to confuse those who were interested. Prince Ji was strict in choosing friends, and he was not casual in choosing concubines. Chang Yu bet 50 tails of gold with Dragonfly. For these 50 tails of gold, Dragonfly quickly discovered a brand new version. It is said that this girl Nuya Hujin was indeed found by the crown prince from the Welling Department, but she was not rescued from some horse thief. This is the result of seven years of hard work by the four shadow guards. It is said that Miss Jin is the only bead left by the late king of Nan and who survived the palace coup in Naran 15 years ago. Because she is descended from the Meng family of Nanran, her real name should actually be Mengjin. Prince Ji brought her back for the Nanran ancient book, which contained the thousand-year wisdom of the entire Nanran tribe hidden in Nanran's ancient tomb. Nanran people are good at the art of poisonous poison, and they are also good at Qi and Duanjia. Therefore, when Nanran's political situation was in turmoil 15 years ago, even under such a good opportunity, Prince Li Chuan failed to bring Nanran into his trap. But if one can enter Nanran's ancient tomb and obtain those ancient books to decipher Nanran's magical methods, then Nanran's defeat will be a matter of time. Opening Nanran's ancient tomb requires the blood of a saint, and the saint of Nanran is the chosen one. This is the reason why Prince Ji spent so much effort on Mengjin. The saintess of Nanran's generation is this Princess Mengjin who lives in seclusion in the Yuling tribe and goes by the pseudonym Nua Hujan. And now King Nanran has been looking for this missing saint since he killed his brother and stole the throne 15 years ago. After telling this story, Dragonfly sighed on behalf of the crown prince. Fortunately, the crown prince took the lead. He also expressed his prediction. It can be seen that the next step for the crown prince is to visit the ancient tomb of Nan Ran. After Dragonfly finished speaking, Cheng Yu covered his mouth slightly, a little surprised. For 50 tails of gold, Dragonfly sold Prince Ji smoothly and without any hesitation. She was a little worried about Dragonfly. Aren't you afraid that the prince will cut you if he finds out? Dragonfly nodded back to her. Yes. This has always been the case in the world. The more you know, the faster you will die. Yu Yu looked at Chen Yu. 
The princess knows as much as I do at this time. Chang Yu cried sadly. I don't want to know so much. Is it still too late for me to pretend that I didn't hear anything? Dragonfly chuckled and said, The princess is wise. He said with deep meaning, So if Miss Jin provokes the princess one day, please ignore her. Since you know how much effort the prince has spent on her, you should know once you and Miss Jin have a dispute, the prince will not stand on your side for his great cause and overall situation, even if you are right, princess. She sighed, my prince, he is doing big things. The crown prince. Chen Yu was stunned for a moment, expressing that he understood the prince's ambition, his protection for Meng Jin, and Meng Jin's contempt for her, but he could not understand why Meng Jin would provoke her. Dragonfly considered it carefully and said, didn't the princess see that Miss Jin regarded the princess as a powerful enemy? Ching Yu felt strange as to why she regarded herself as a strong enemy. Dragonfly looked at her and was very worried. For a long time, he touched her head with pity and said, Princess, you don't need to understand why. Just listen to my words. Ching Yu has never doubted Dragonfly's intelligence and also admires Dragonfly's ability to recognize people. But she didn't take Dragonfly's prediction to Meng Jin to heart. Until four days later. For days later in the morning, Cheng Yu was reclining on a soft couch in the garden pavilion, with her hair tied up and a navy blue forehead protector tied in front of her forehead. She held a gold, illuminated fan in her hand and sang in tune with the lyrics of the red-dressed singer in front of her. There's no one to beat. It had been raining heavily in the past few days, and she couldn't stay in the back garden any longer. Ordinary people may think that admiring the delicate flowers in the rain is a kind of elegant pleasure, but as Cheng Yu walked around, he saw that the whole yard was full of beauties who had been watered down by the rain. The dragonfly sighed at the side, look at how intoxicating this four seasoned crabapple is with its shyness and timidity in the light rain. Chen Yu could only see a few days of cold rain beating a beauty in orange to the point of fainting. She felt that there was only the sky eye. Can understand her pain. Fortunately, Dragonfly picked a singer from her house who was good at singing to accompany her to pass the time, and there were no flowers or plants growing around the pavilion where she stayed, so she stayed in this pavilion for four days. The singer in red was playing the pipa and was singing, Cheonghua is broken, the cold fragrance is gone, the west wind only heads towards the ruthless night. Meng Jin, who should have had nothing to do with her, walked in. After the singer fell silent, Cheng Yu sat upright and smiled and asked Meng Jin, Miss Jin, she heard sister Lian Yin's beautiful singing voice, so she also became interested in sitting here. Meng Jin looked as straight as a willow tree. He stood in front of her and changed his words halfway, are you stopping here? Meng Jin frowned and looked at her coldly. The princess is the princess of the Xi dynasty, but why does she call a lowly actress her sister? Cheng Yu put the fan in front of his forehead. In fact, she not only called the actors her sister, she also called the maids who served her her sister. She even called the girls in the brothels in Pingan City, everyone she met, her sister. The girls thought she was sweet-tongued and rarely a spendthrift, so they all liked her. She had never thought this was a problem. It was the first time she was accused like this, and she was a little confused for a while. Ming Jin continued, In the past month, I have seen the princess here admiring flowers, watching birds, raising birds and fishing, and now she is still hanging out with actors. Does the princess plan to do this every day? Chen Yu felt that she had cultivated her moral character to the fullest extent. She must know that in order for her to be able to do this in Pingan City, Zhu Hibiscus would be so happy that she would burn incense every day. She smiled and raised her eyebrows at Meng Jin. Isn't this good enough for me? Meng Jin looked at her from top to bottom, with contempt in her eyes, and raised her eyebrows slightly. If the princess wants to live such a life, she should not stay in Li Chuan Palace. Lichuan Palace is different from the palace in the capital. There are differences. We cannot tolerate a wealthy and carefree princess who does not understand worldly affairs. Sooner or later, the princess will be a drag on the prince. It is better to return to your Jing'an Palace as soon as possible. In this way, it will be a burden to the princess, the prince, and the palace. Good thing. Chin Yu propped up the tip of his chin with the tip of his fan. 
Meng Jin said calmly, Princess, please consider it carefully. After saying this, Cheng Yu stepped out of the pavilion and left calmly in the light rain without waiting for Cheng Yu's response. The singer in red, Lian Yin, plucked the strings at will and played the ditty again. Cheng Yu also put a fan against the tip of her chin and said for a long time, Sister Dragonfly said that Miss Jin will come to provoke me, Sister Lian Yin. Why do I feel that Miss Jin is not provoking me, but driving me out of the palace? Lian Yin smiled slightly. The princess used the word, drive, which is not a good word. I think it is more euphemistic, and the word persuade sounds better. Cheng Yu spread out his folding fan on the ground, half hiding his face, with a graceful movement, and sighed softly. They all want me to leave. Lian Yin hugged her pipa and sang quietly. Xionghua folds, cold incense fades, the west wind only blows towards the ruthless night. She smiled and said, the princess enjoys the couplets with her slaves, so why bother to worry about other things? The song the princess chose had a sad tune, and when paired with the phrase, princess, princess, it seemed very sad, so the slave girl reduced the phrase by two characters, wondering if the princess would feel less lonely. Already, Cheng Yu folded her fan and said happily, Sister Lianin is worthy of being a great songwriter and a master of calligraphy. But Cheng Yu looked back and thought about leaving the house. She stayed in Lichuan Palace because she wanted to make friends with Prince Ji, and her loyal servant Zhu Jin happened to think she was very annoying at that time, so he threw her here. Zhu Jin meant to pick her up again in half a year. It was mid-February when she first came to the palace, and it was only mid-May. It is actually very meaningless for her to reach this point with Prince Ji. It is indeed unreasonable for her to stay in the palace any longer, but Li Chuan is not as peaceful as Ping'an City, so she left the palace rashly. If something happens to her, the emperor's attitude is hard to say, but Zhu Jin will definitely use his bare hands. The demolition of Li Chuan Prince's mansion really caused trouble for the old prince and his wife. She thought it was better to stay. From then on, every time she met Meng Jin, she would look at him with a look that said, Why haven't you left yet? One time, in order to catch a colorful butterfly flying towards the flowing spring and waterfall in the garden, Cheng Yu followed her on tiptoe. She overheard Meng Jin chatting with her maid on the side. Of the rock in Nanran dialect, they said a few words, Is her? The maid said, His Royal Highness has been coming to the garden for a walk every day for this month. Miss you. Meng Jin said nothing. The maid said bitterly, Then why doesn't Princess Hong Yu leave? The girl has explained the truth to her clearly, so she can just settle down and be a useless person in the palace who drags down his highness? She didn't understand the girl. The meaning is still. Meng Jin spoke. She understands, she said lightly. It's just that women from the central plains are probably as light as bones. As they spoke, the two stepped out of the rock and saw her at first sight. The round-faced maid looked panicked, but Meng Jin was quite calm and even frowned. Cheng Yu smiled, put her fingers between her lips, and made a silent gesture with them. Then she pointed at the colorful butterfly sitting on a big red foshan flower and tiptoed close to the foshan flower. The flower, like a predatory kite, swooped towards the colorful butterfly, then immediately got up from the flowers and said worriedly, Hey, this can make you run away and chase the flying colorful butterfly all the way. In the soft wind, I heard the round-faced maid behind me sigh in relief. Fortunately, she doesn't understand Nanran. Meng Jin said calmly, So what if you understand? There was a hint of anger in her voice. He is just such a person who loses his ambition by playing with things. Cheng Yu chased Kai Dai without any pause. If anyone in Ping in City dared to say that she was light-boned, she could beat him to the point of paralysis, let alone a barbarian princess, or even the princess of the dynasty. But thinking that she was in Li Chuan Palace today, as Dragonfly said, Meng Jin was of great use to Prince Ji. Although Prince Ji and her were like this, they always saved her. Moreover, she was taken care of by the Prince of Li Chuan for three months, because Zhu Jin was a man of his word who said he would pick her up after half a year, so they had to take care of her for another three months. After all, the Lichuan Palace was kind to her. 
For this favor, she was willing to bear with Mang Jun's inexplicable hostility towards her. In the summer season, the sun was scorching hot, and it was too hot to stay in the garden, so Dragonfly took Chen Yu out to listen to books, but rarely saw Mang Jun again. Dragonfly mentioned something, saying that there were a lot of things going on in the government recently, and the crown prince was very busy. Chen Yu didn't ask much, so Dragonfly didn't say much either. The two of them just spent their days listening to books, watching plays, and playing with things. As a result, something happened at the end of that month. Prince Ji led his elite soldiers and generals to visit Nanran's ancient tomb. Eighteen people went out, but only two came back. One is Meng Jin, and the other is Prince Ji who was poisoned in order Ji Shi Tsi was poisoned, and his life and death were on the line. Logically speaking, this was a good time to ease the relationship between Ji and Cheng. Dragonfly read many storybooks from ancient times to the present and had a deep understanding of this. She understood that even if the prince thought that there was a gap between the two of them, as long as the princess she shed tears and served the prince every day, how could the sick prince be able to resist? If you live, you will definitely obey. She had been watching with cold eyes a few days ago, feeling that the princess was really a tolerant person. It was the prince who thought that the princess was innocent and childish and could not stand side by side with him. Therefore, it was the prince who kept the princess thousands of miles away, but the person who looked away from him with hidden pain was also the prince. She felt that her plan was actually for the prince's good. But the problem was that Prince G was too strict and skillful in controlling his subordinates, so it was already three days before Dragonfly discovered the news that Prince G had been poisoned. By the time she had just drawn up a picture in her mind, she could use this opportunity to help the princess and the crown prince clear up their past suspicions. When the great blueprint came, she immediately found out that the prince's poison had been cured. It is indeed like the routine in the storybook. When Pian Pian Jia's life was hanging by a thread, he cried bitterly in the company of a beautiful woman to take care of him, but that was not Cheng Yu. It was Miss Jin who prepared the antidote for the prince. It was also Miss Jin who was waiting to serve the prince's bed. When the prince woke up, it was Miss Jin who cried so hard in front of him. Dragonfly felt that the crown prince and the princess were going to be completely out of touch. Chin Yu learned about the poisoning of Prince Ji on the seventh day after the prince returned home. It was not entirely from Dragonfly that she heard the news from the cherry tree at the entrance of Jeshuanjiwen, and she went to ask Dragonfly again. Chin Yu sat in the study for a while, rummaging through the boxes and cabinets to find the Yushan book that she had read so fascinatedly a few days ago. In it, she made a lot of notes in small regular script. She also recorded the many strange mountains and mountains she had visited outside Pingan City, which echoed the mountains and rivers of Hancheng recorded in the book. Dragonfly read it and found it very interesting. She held the booklet in her arms and took Dragonfly to visit the doctor in Just Wong Hospital. They were waiting for someone in the outer hall and went to the inner room to communicate. When Meng Jin came out of the inner room, he frowned when he saw the two of them, but said nothing and walked out of the outer hall with the medicine bowl. Soon a boy came out and invited the two of them in. Dragonfly followed the boy for two steps before he noticed that there was no movement from Chen Yu behind him. When he looked back, he saw her holding a teacup in her left hand and leaning on the armrest of the armchair with her right hand. Her eyelashes were slightly lowered, not knowing what she was thinking. Dragonfly called her, Princess. She finally came to her senses, but still didn't move much. She only slowly moved the fingers of her right hand that were supporting her forehead to her cheek and looked over with her lowered eyes. The slight laziness brought about by silence and sluggishness is very different from the usual beauty. It is paired with a pair of slightly frowned eyebrows, clear and calm. Dragonfly sighed in her heart, thinking that if she were the prince, she would not be able to push her away because of this beautiful face. Actually, I came a little hastily, Chang Yu said slowly, not in a high mood. I actually forgot that Prince Ji always dislikes me and always gets angry when he sees me. This time he is ill in bed and should have fewer children during the rest period. Be angry. She paused. Just now I saw that there was no worry on Miss Jin's face. I think it's not a big deal for Crown Prince Ji. 
Now that he's here, Sister Dragonfly, please go in and take a look at the Crown Prince. I'll go for a walk outside and wait for you in the garden. After saying this, he put down the teacup and was about to stand up. His eyes fell on the Yushan book, placed aside, and he was stunned. Seeing her like this, Dragonfly thought carefully and said, The prince must be bored in bed, so why don't I bring this book to the prince on behalf of the princess? She was silent for a moment, then picked up the book and said, Prince Ji will not be able to look down on anything that has passed my hands. Forget it. She gathered the books and walked out of the outer hall. Dragonfly looked at her back quietly for a while and sighed softly. Ji Shitsi side of Shuang Yuan was named after the many frost-resistant flowers planted in the courtyard. However, because the blooming period of frost-resistant flowers in this courtyard is later than that of ordinary frost-resistant flowers, only the green trees can be seen but no flower buds. Therefore, Cheng Yu, who accidentally entered this flower forest, did not feel that he had a big head. He only felt that he had hit it by mistake. It's rare to find a quiet place. She walked up and down, wandering around wantonly, and didn't notice that there was a half-closed window behind the willow shade. Suddenly a whisper came from behind the window, That's the business. Let me talk about other things. It was the voice of a dragonfly. Cheng Yu stopped and then heard dragonfly say, She is worried about you. Cheng Yu's brows that had finally relaxed were knitted again. She remembered that behind the Xian window seemed to be Ji Mingfeng's inner room, and the person talking to the dragonfly should be Ji Mingfeng. Dragonfly continued, She is in the courtyard right now. Why doesn't she come in? Maybe. You understand. Is getting to this point with her what you want, your highness? In fact, your highness. Doesn't want this, right? Ching Yu was stunned. Of course she understood that dragonfly was talking about her. Ji Mingfeng had just pulled out the poison and was currently weak, so he couldn't notice that she was outside. However, Dragonfly was such a sensitive shadow guard that he must have known that she was standing in the willow shade outside the house at this time. However, she mentioned her to Ji Mingfeng, presumably because she thought she was not good at martial arts and stood a little far away, so there was no way she could hear their conversation. But her hearing power has always been much stronger than that of ordinary people. She felt that she should leave quickly. After all, the matter was over. She shouldn't want to know why they were talking about her, nor should she want to know what Ji Mingfeng thought of her in private. But as he was taking steps, he heard Ji Mingfeng's hoarse voice from behind the window. She can only be an innocent princess who doesn't know the world, but I can't have an innocent princess who doesn't know the world. He suppressed a cough. She has no ability to participate in the future of the palace. It is a good thing to leave as soon as possible. Ching Yu stopped. Silence returned to the room. After a long while, Dragonfly spoke again. Is Ming Jin someone who has the ability to participate in the future of the palace? Ji Mingfeng didn't answer. Dragonfly sighed lowly. This matter is actually my meddling, but thanks to your highness who has always regarded me as a friend, I will overstep my bounds and say one more thing today. The world is like this, and what suits you may not be what you want. What you want may not be suitable for you. Your Highness, since you insist on making this choice, I just hope you will never regret it. This sentence was a rare response from Ji Mingfeng. Ji Mingfeng coughed for a while. Hong Yu and I, we have nothing to say between us. You don't have to worry about this in the future. She won't be able to stay in the palace for long. After a pause, he lowered his voice. The voice seemed to be talking to himself, but Cheng Yu still heard the words, after she leaves, it is unlikely that we will see each other again. There was silence in the room for another moment, and Dragonfly said softly, Don't you feel sorry, your highness? Ji Mingfeng's voice was as calm as usual, like a rhetorical question and a question. He asked Dragonfly, What regrets do you have? That means there are no regrets. Chang Yu lowered her eyes slightly, and then she quickly left there. She actually didn't quite understand some of the conversation between Ji Mingfeng and Dragonfly. For example, Dragonfly's two sentences about what was suitable were not what he wanted, and what he wanted was not suitable. If this is about making friends, it seems that making friends does not necessarily require so many considerations. But she understood all of Ji Mingfeng's words. 
It turns out that Prince Ji suddenly disliked her because she was naive and ignorant of the world. A naive and ignorant princess was of no help to him or Li Chuan, who was in a complicated situation, and he did not make friends who were not helpful to him. Prince Ji probably still looked down upon her, thinking that she was weak and incompetent, and he did not want her to stay in Li Chuan Palace for a long time. Even if it was difficult for them to meet again in the future due to their respective identities, he would not feel any regret. Oh, he was quite annoyed with her in the first place. Of course, he would not have any regrets if they could not see each other again in the future. She didn't know he looked at her like this before. But there's actually no difference. Why did she stop just now? Dragonfly asked Ji Ming Feng, His Highness actually didn't want to do this? She could generally predict how he would answer, and there was really no need to stay and listen. Sure enough, there was nothing new about what he said in reply to Dragonfly. But it still hurts to listen to it again. But then she stopped. Why did you stop even though you knew it would be uncomfortable? Could it be that she still expected that the dislike for her shown on his face was due to some unavoidable reasons? After walking out of the forest of frost-resistant flowers, she hit her forehead with the Yushen book she had been holding in her hand. The hit was a little heavy, and her brain buzzed. Then she scolded herself. You are what are you dreaming about? Sunset has arrived. Although the frost has not yet reached the flowering stage, there are flowers and trees in full bloom in the garden, which have been burned by the hot summer sun all day long. At this time, the slightly cool twilight comes, and between the coolness and the heat, it arouses a very strong feeling. The aroma of tangy. It's brandy. Ching Yu remembered that there was indeed a towering white orchid growing in the grove in front of him. It was a thousand-year-old tree that would transform into a demon in a few decades. When she went to the South Study Room every day, she thought about how beautiful this tree would be when it bloomed. After thinking about it for a while, I was no longer in a hurry to meet the dragonfly in the outer hall and walked all the way towards the ancient white orchid with the strong fragrance of flowers. I just didn't expect that today I would be lucky enough to listen to the corner. When she could vaguely see the fluttering clothes of the ancient white orchid, two acquaintances not far ahead blocked her view. The person standing with her hands behind her back is Meng Jin, and the person holding a medicine shovel and digging something is the round-faced maid who had an affair with Chin Yu that day when she was flapping butterflies at the flowing spring waterfall. The two still talked in Nanran this time, still mentioned her, and the round-faced maid still complained about her fiercely. The carelessness was still so careless, saying that she, the princess, was not visible in the prince's important affairs, and that she, the princess, was invisible when the prince was poisoned and his life was hanging by a thread. Now that the prince is safe, she came to visit him under the pretense, just to use it as really hateful and disgusting for an innocent and pretending to be ignorant face to pester the prince. Chang Yu had overheard Meng Jin discussing her with her maid once, and understood that Meng Jin relied on her status, so she actually didn't want to comment on her more. But what surprised Cheng Yu was that Meng Jin made an exception this time, and endured her boredom and impatience, and said a long sentence, Women in the Central Plains are like this, they have always been weak and useless. The Central Plains is indeed full of heroes, and men they are generally admirable, but the women of the Central Plains are nothing more than the vassals of men. They are protected and spoiled by the men, and all of them have become useless. The explicit contempt was revealed in the words, even the emperor married. This is just the way a noble girl is. She has been pampered and enjoyed dignity since she was a child. He mocked coldly, she has a good face. She is not a waste, she is just a pet. She is not worth mentioning. There is no need to mention her again in the future. The round-faced maid replied calmly and said that the women in the Central Plains really have no ambition. It is rare to see a woman standing side by side with the men, even if they are both noble. Ladies, how can the princess currently serving in the mansion compare to her? Home princess. For example, if Prince Ji wants to be an eagle that soars in the sky, her princess can also be an eagle. If Prince Ji wants to be a tiger that dominates the mountains and forests, then her princess can also be a tiger. The lazy princess with a good face can also be a tiger. It really doesn't need to be mentioned. 
There are many expressions of satisfaction in the language. Mengjin smiled and said nothing more. She only told the maid who was digging the medicine not to damage the roots of the medicine. Chang Yu stood for a while leaning against the poinciana tree that only three people could encircle. Seeing that the master and servant had no intention of leaving the forest for a while, he touched his nose and found another side road, still heading toward Zayu. A piece of fluttering clothes was exposed under the color to provoke Gu Bailon and left. This time, it was twice that Ching Yu caught Princess Nanran neglecting and despising her behind her back. This is a bit embarrassing. In fact, she didn't care much about Mengjin before, but today, it was a little different. Because today she finally knew what Prince Ji thought of her. In essence, Prince Ji's views were quite consistent with Mengjin's views. Therefore, Mengjin's words were like annotations to Prince Ji's words, making her listen to every word. When she was carefree in Pingin City as the young master of Princess Jade, Cheng Yu never cared what others said about her, because the world regarded her as a dandy, and she saw how many fools there were in the world, and the opinions of fools were different. What is important? But Prince Ji was someone she recognized and cared about. There were not many such people in her life. She could count them on one hand. Because they were rare, she listened to every word they said, cared about every word, and kept every word deep in her heart. And precisely because she values these words, once these words turn into hurt, it will be a very powerful hurt. There aren't many people who can hurt her. This couldn't help but make Chung Yu feel embarrassed and angry. She grew up with a child's skin and knew everything about eating, drinking, and having fun. She didn't look very stable, and she was really young. Some people in the world thought she was a loser. She was safe and wealthy because she had an old father who sacrificed his life for the country. But the world doesn't know that this princess is also the flower owner of Sherwa Tower. There are hundreds of flower demons in Sherwa Tower. But only relying on an old father who sacrificed his life for the country, Ching Yu can become the princess of Dashi Dynasty. But I can't be the flower owner of hundreds of flower demons. Why can the demons recognize her as immortal as the flower owner? Just relying on good fortune is not enough. Although flower demons are the most docile of monsters, all monsters are always a little unscrupulous and unconventional. The reason why the flower demons love this little princess is definitely not because she has two amulets, Ju Jin Li Xiang. They love and value her as innocent and brave as an eagle, as strong and fearless as a young tiger. They love and value her infinite courage and amazing courage. They also love and value her first-class decisiveness. Chin Yu rarely hesitates when things happen. She is always decisive. Under the faint moonlight, Chung Yu leaned on an ordinary weeping willow tree, looking at Gu Bailon, who had turned into a beauty in yellow in her eyes. She played with the jade ring on her right thumb and smiled. Sister Ring, you may I haven't seen it, but I think you should have heard it. Gu Bailon was looking at Cheng Yu unscrupulously with curious eyes and was surprised when she heard this. You, are you talking to me? Chin Yu changed his position and leaned against the weeping willow, looking up at her. Sister is born very beautiful. The fingers of his left hand caressed the shining jade finger on the thumb of his right hand, and he turned it around twice casually. It has a name, it's Peony. Emperor Yao Huang named it Shisheng, saying it was Da Yin Shisheng. Gu Bailon, who was floating in the air three feet above the ground, widened his eyes, stared at the white jade finger in a daze, and murmured, Peony. Emperor Yao Shisheng. After a long time, he slowly moved his surprised eyes to Cheng Yu. Hanching was only built 700 years ago, but this ancient white orchid has been cultivating here for more than 2,000 years. Although it has not been able to transform into another form, she has gained wisdom very early, so she knows a lot about the world. Mortals look at this secular world and think that the emperor exercises power on behalf of heaven. Under the sky, they should respect the emperor of their human race. As the saying goes, the whole world is not the king's land, and the shores of the land are not the king's ministers. But this is just the knowledge of the human race. For the monsters born in the mortal world, the human race has a king, but it has nothing to do with them. There are important things about the human race, but they have nothing to do with them. 
The monsters also have their own king and their own big things. Among all kinds of monsters, only the flower monster family has a somewhat special situation. Every demon clan in the world has a demon king, but the flower demon clan has not had a king for a long time. Over the years, 100 spiritual clan leaders have been selected from thousands of flowers and trees in various places to take over the kingship and perform the duties of flower masters. According to the legend Gu Bailon had heard, the flower demon clan actually had a king. At that time, they had not yet turned into monsters. They have had two flower owners. Although the first flower master was not selected from their clan, his status was extremely respected. He was the son of the heavenly lord above the nine heavens and the water god who controls the waters of the world. His highness was appointed as the general manager of the nine heavens Yaopul, so he took the opportunity to do so. Their flower owner. Although the second flower owner's background is not that noble, it is very legendary. He was born into the demon clan since he was a child, and he is a red lotus with extremely demonic nature. The demonic nature is so heavy and it is a red lotus. The gods don't like it. If you want to become an immortal, it will be difficult to reach heaven. But she happened to become an immortal and became the manager of the Yauchi. She became the sect master of all the flower gods, flower fairies, and flower demons. There are 12,000 flower ceremonies in the nine heavens created by her, each of, which is so brilliant that it has been recorded in the immortal treasure book on the 36th day. There are 720 heavenly rain mandala ceremonies hosted by her, won the praise of the picky emperor Don Hua. And the 500 kinds of flowers and trees she cultivated once helped Yao Jun develop 13,000 new prescription lists, and her immeasurable merits benefited the people of the six realms. When she was in power, the flowers and trees in the world were always blooming, won the respect of thousands of people. 12,000 flower ceremony, 720 heavenly rain mandala ceremonies, are 720 years in the ninth heaven. This flower master reigned for a total of 720 years, but then died because he broke into the 27-day demon-locking tower to rescue his friends. Tianjun was furious. Even though she was dead, she removed her position as flower master and wanted to establish a new one. She never thought that Wanwa would not obey, but she was willing to become a monster to follow and worship the dead master, which made Tianjun even more angry. Originally, Tianjun was angry. They wanted to exterminate the Wanwa clan, but Emperor Donghua persuaded them, so they just expelled them from their immortal status and exiled them everywhere. But from then on, there were no more flower fairies or gods in the world, and thousands of flowers and trees could only become monsters no matter how they cultivated themselves. Jichangshan is no longer too lazy to care about their life and death, and they themselves have never established a flower master in the long passage of time in the mortal world. But 15 years ago, in this mortal world, their hundred clan leaders actually welcomed a new master. This new owner is still a mortal who should have nothing to do with their monsters. This is a secret that only the Wamu clan knows, and everyone knows that it cannot be shared with outsiders. It is said that although the new master is immortal, he is born extraordinary. Because the newborn body cannot withstand the extraordinary power in the body, the heads of hundreds of clans have spent thousands of years practicing together to forge a seal and command the little flower master to wear it all year round. The ring finger was personally sealed and named by Yao Huang, the peony emperor, the most prestigious among the clan leaders, and the name was Shisheng. Bai Lan looked at the girl in white clothes in front of her and saw that her eyes were slightly lowered. Her profile was a little cold under the moonlight, but she was particularly beautiful. If there is a mortal in the world who is qualified to be their flower master, then this mortal must be so beautiful. The girl raised her head slightly and blinked her eyelashes. She was young and she should have looked a little innocent, but her eyes seemed to be smiling but not smiling, and she was very calm. Bai Lan's heart trembled, and she felt that her beauty had given her a lot. Due to the pressure, he unconsciously knelt on the ground in midair, his lips trembling a few times. Flower master. The girl raised her hand slightly. What kind of courtesy are you doing? She said calmly, 
Lichuan Chronicles, Seventeen Notes, Second Mountains, Lonely Dreams. These books talk about Lichuan's geography and scenery. I have generally seen it, and I probably know that my sister is the longest cultivating flower tree in the whole South. She paused, although my sister has not transformed and cannot leave the place where she is rooted, she has been carried by the wind for thousands of years. Flower seeds and flocks of birds traveling from north to south must have brought you a lot of news. Bailon composed herself, and there was no hesitation in her voice. Please give me the flower master's instructions. The girl smiled slightly. I want to know, is Namran ancient tomb familiar to my sister? Bailon paused for a long time. Two hundred years ago, there was a great chaos in the Naran tribe. After the great chaos, no mortal could enter the depths of that ancient tomb alive. The voice was ethereal. I know that the owner of this palace wants to get the contents of the tomb. Ancient books, but in the end they just died in vain. They can't get those books. The girl raised her eyebrows. Then do you think I can get it? Bailon was surprised. Even you the flower master, have to spend endless efforts. It's just a boring fight among mortals. Why should the flower master get involved? The girl said casually, the prince of Lichuan has been kind to me. Her eyes were fixed on the unknown distance. This kindness must be repaid. End of Lotus Step Chapter 14 Book 1 by Tang Chi English translated using Google